let's say we have an array. In this case, we have an array of just 10 elements, but you can pretend that this is some arbitrarily large array, 100,000 elements, 500,000 elements, and we need to process those elements. One way we could do it is to do it sequentially. So loop over each individual element in the array and print it out. However, this approach only really works if your data set is acceptably small. Let's say, for example, we had 500,000 elements. We probably don't want to do this sequentially. Right now, it's probably harmless because we're just printing, but let's say we were making like a database call. Like, let's say these were database updates, for example, that we needed to make. We don't want to hit the database 500,000 times. So one thing we could do is batch processing. Instead of processing each element individually, we could batch or chunk the elements together and then process the chunks. Well, how do we create these chunks? Let's go down here and let's say function chunk. And this chunk function is gonna actually be a generator function. And it's gonna have a type parameter T. And we're gonna to wanna to tell our chunk function A, the elements that we want to create chunks out of, and B, how large we want each chunk to be. And so let's say batch size uh, number and then items, the actual items we want to be able to chunk. And we're going to give it a type of array of type T. And so we're going to be able to basically tell it uh, if we want to what type these items are. And then it's going to return, since it's a generator function, it's going to return a generator and it's going to return a generator of an array of type T's. So what chunk is going to do is it's going to loop over all the elements in the array, however large it is, and it's going to return these subarrays or chunks that are batch size large. And then that'll enable us to be able to do some batch processing instead of having to do all of the processing individually. And because chunk is a generator function, that means we don't have to loop over every item in the array before returning the first chunk. We could find the first chunk and then return it. And then we call chunk again and we get the next chunk and return that one. And this will allow us to loop over arrays that are very large without running into performance issues. All right, so let's go inside of chunk and we're gonna create a loop for let i equals zero i is less than items dot length and then i plus equal batch size so basically we're looping over all the elements in items but we're not doing it one by one you can see that the incrementer here is i plus equals batch size so this for loop is going to basically run in batches instead of on each individual element and so we can go inside the for loop and say const batch equals items dot slice to create a new array and then the index we want to start at is i and then we want to go to i plus batch size and this should get the next chunk out of the array uh, based off of where we're at in the for loop and then all that's left to do is to yield this batch and this will return the current batch to whoever called chunk and so let's go back up here and let's bring this down here. And we're going to modify this a little bit. So instead of saying const item of very long array, we're going to call chunk. And we're going to pass in, let's say we want chunks of size three. And then we're going to pass in very long array. And let's say this is batch. Instead, we console log the batch and let's rerun this. We get uh, four subarrays that are batch size long, except for the last one, of course, because, you know, there's not enough elements in the last batch, but you get the idea. And so, yeah, you could take these chunks and you could make the chunks bigger if you wanted to. Let's say you want chunks of size six. Uh, so you have a chunk of size six and then the last chunk is size four because there's not enough elements. But yeah, that's that's how it works. So having this chunk function might be a good starting point for you if you're trying to do your own batch processing. If you like this video, leave a like, comment if you have any questions, subscribe if you want to see more web dev tutorials. But other than that, peace.